Hey guys, God's teaching me a lot this week. <laughs> it's been a big week. Um, my name is Lauren. This is my channel and uh, if you're brand new here, you can join us for just weekly reflections about ways God is teaching us in our life. And so uh, I really appreciate people coming into this conversation. This week was a big week, right? Um, the Pope, there was a news story that came out about him that he um, made a call to action for uh, Ley de Convivencia Civil. Convivencia Civil. Okay, so civil convivience among the homosexual, for protection for the homosexual community. And this like blew up. And initially, like, I saw a video about, it was Matt Frad's video, and he was talking about it, that um, he had made a statement endorsing civil unions. Um, but it turns out with the nuances in translation, as it turned out, the nuances in translation show that it wasn't necessarily um, him endorsing civil unions. It was... A call to action for social justice for these groups of people and um, but I'll tell you what that really let me lose my peace at the beginning of the week I was getting anxious feelings like what does this mean for the church like what is this um, what did he mean by that there needs to be clarification I don't understand like where's this coming from is this contradicting like is what is going on and I was so caught up in the confusion and the frustration about confusion because I know that oftentimes like our Pope has spoken and then the media takes his words out of context and we get confused um, and just frustrated like why would he allow that why would he allow that confusion why would God allow that you know and just kind of getting upset about that um, but really like I have made a complete turnaround in the way I feel about all this because um, I made a video, a reaction I suppose. I wanted to be with the community, my community during this time like where it was just kind of confusing where we can just kind of like process it together. Um, but I did end up taking that video down because it was, it, people care about this topic. It was getting a ton of views and I just, there was something that just didn't sit right with me. And I realize what that is now. And you know, that was, it wasn't wrong. Like what, having that conversation, it wasn't wrong, but it was premature. And so often in life and particularly in matters of faith and um, it, we have to pause first. We really have to pause first take a breath like pause pray proceed <laughs> and I did pause I paused for like five minutes and then I prayed and then I proceeded and but so often it's not our timeline it's God's timeline and we might have to pause for days and days before things become clear. And sometimes we're gifted, like I was gifted this week, with just immense clarity by the end of the week. Um, it depends on the timeline. It depends on what God is doing in your life and what his plan is for you. But to be able to pause and sit in silence and just be open to God and let that be that space that pausing and that praying, you know, being open to the gifts, humbling ourselves, becoming little like a child. And I say all this humbly to you because I am the worst one at this. I, <laughs> my husband always says I'm a feet first kind of a girl. Like I just jump right into things and, um, and I just hope that, you know, I'm going in the right direction. But um, so all that to say like I speak very humbly and I'm not sharing like I got it all figured out and you got to do this I am sharing what God is showing me and teaching me and I just hope that you know it resonates with some of you and maybe you can even add to the conversation 
down below. Um, so after we pause, we've prayed, and then we proceed, then it's time to respond, not a reaction, a response, a response to the prayer and to that nudging. We're only human, we're gonna react. I reacted on Wednesday, was it Wednesday? And just like, like my heart started beating so quickly and like I was having anxiety, like I had a, a autoimmune flare up, like I, my whole body was reacting. Um, we're human. But we have to have awareness of that and to um, step back and be responsive and open. So this week, that was a hard one to be open to because it seemed so contrary. But then looking further into it after the fact when I could see the actual video footage and listen to the actual words and I praise God I do speak Spanish well enough to understand the tone of it all and I can see why the Pope would say laws to protect these communities because he's a worldwide Pope and his job is to you know protect worldwide the faithful worldwide and he he was making a statement more maybe more so for countries where people are worse off than you know they are in the United States or other more pr progressive countries um, for lack of a better word but you know, there's still places that that type of crime can be punishable by stoning. Like that is crazy. And yes, like laws should protect communities, vulnerable communities. That is a social justice thing that we should care about as Catholics, absolutely. Um, so I got caught up there. But what the Lord showed me, what the Lord showed me is Timing is everything, right? But I was blessed to have a really nice conversation with somebody from the LGBTQ community this week, and it just happened. And what struck me is how it wasn't that second statement that that person was concerned about. It was the first statement the Pope made. And that statement was that everyone deserves to be part of a family. Nobody should be cast out. And to me, that statement, I was like, yeah, of course, duh. <laughs> I was like the throwaway statement. You know, we're all part of the body of Christ. Duh. <laughs> to me, that's so obvious. There's no confusion there. But to this particular person, that is what resonated with them. And what that tells me is that that acknowledgement of people in vulnerable groups is so vital even though to me i it's like a given you know of course they're acknowledged like that's why we do what we do it needs to be spoken and that is how god used this situation in my life where I had an awareness of oh okay yeah you have you have to look the person in the eye and say I see you I love you God loves you and truly mean that and I'm not just talking about um, same-sex couples I'm not just I, I'm talking about everyone everyone we encounter we have to be Jesus to that person I see you I love you you are loved because they are that's what it's all about God loves so loved the world he gave his only begotten son and he died for us and we should be sharing that that is so important and on a personal level. 
So that is what God is teaching me through this and just kind of showing me my blind spots because I get so blind about the legalities of things. The, um, and I fail to see the most obvious thing. And there's so many things in life like that where I'm just so blind to the most obvious thing. And it really is very simple. Like we have to become childlike. Just humble ourselves like a child. Jesus loved the children because it's so clear, it's so clear to them. Um, so am I applying the fruits of the spirit in my life? I think about this week, you know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I failed <laughs> so many of these virtues, these areas. I didn't have patience with my understanding. I wanted to understand now and I wanted clarity and I had no peace and no joy. And <laughs> like, I struggled to love those in front of me because I was so wrapped up and you know, kindness, goodness, and being faithful and trusting, trusting God, um, gentleness and self-control, like not having the self-control to carry myself in a demeanor that I should have. Um, one of my beautiful YouTube friends made a comment on the video that, like I said, it's been taken down already, so I'll share her comment a little bit. She talked about um, putting herself in a little bit of a mommy bubble. And, you know, not everybody would agree with this type of tactic, and that's fine. But um, we have to remember the priorities. And the priorities are God, our marriage, and our family first, and then everything else. And so um, sometimes keeping up with the news can disrupt that central unit. And so um, this particular mom was saying that she like protects herself from those things because she knows that if she keeps up with them that um, it'll affect her vocation and her primary job is to you know raise the children and raise up saints so um, and she knows that if there is something that she needs to know, like her husband will share it with her and like it will get to her, like she trusts that. Um, and I've implemented things like this, um, like I'll <laughs> put up walls of protection against certain topics and things that I just can't handle. Um, I can handle it, but it does preoccupy me and I know that about myself. Um, so, so by doing that, you know, it just really forces you to focus on what's right in front of you and what's happening today and like what is for dinner and I gotta go switch that load of laundry and the, they seem so menial, these menial tasks, but they are so important and they're building up the kingdom um, in its own way and so loving those in front of you, like having these virtues and just when these things sweep us off our feet, just pause, pray and respond. And making space for silence, that is another thing that God is teaching me this week is how important that silence is. And let me just give you a few tips. Like if you are a mom of young children, I know that can be very difficult to get silent time in. Um, but it doesn't have to be perfectly silent. I think often we're like, well, if I get up at 3 a.m. between the hours of 3 and 3.30, I can have my perfect silence. But near silence is good. Quiet is good. You know, you think about mass, like <laughs> there's going to be a baby that makes a peep here and there, but you know, you still can get something out of it. And I think it's kind of a similar concept in prayer we can have near silence we can have like a prayer basket um, of toys like for a little one that you know they only get this basket during prayer time and it's like things they particularly like um, play-doh's really great for keeping little kids occupied and at least that's been my experience um, 
or you know even a young baby like breastfeeding a baby while you're praying like doing it during that time I used to feel like well this isn't really me time because it's you know I'm doing something but absolutely that can be you know time with God in near silence or if your big kid just really wants to chat with you or be with you it's like come on come on like we're praying right now and you're welcome to sit with me but we're gonna be quiet you know and that's just what we're gonna do or you know during Lent sometimes we will do like on Good Friday like total silence in the three o'clock hour like we just don't talk and let's just like you do your best like you know the two-year-old doesn't understand but the one-year-old doesn't understand you do your best and you get um, near silence and I think that God can still speak to us in near silence because I think mothers we have this threshold of like noise tolerance <laughs> <laughs> that some people may not have um, some have higher thresholds than others but you know so that near silence I really do think God can speak to us there and so don't get discouraged if you're not finding that perfect silence time um, and of course like you can create that time you can schedule that time in um, and do the things you have to do to get that too so you know there's there's different solutions but I just wanted to throw out throw that out um, yeah God commands us to love our neighbor and love them through action so let's just think about our neighbors you know our our families our children those we come in contact with and think about the concrete ways that we can love them so anyway I hope you guys are well please leave a comment below and I will be praying for you um, I really like to close today out with a Hail Mary um, and let's just ask Mary to pray to her son for us in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mary, please pray for us and help us to respond to your Son in a holy way. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll see you next week. Bye.